Now let's uh, turn to today's perspective uh, interview. And I must admit, I find this fascinating. We're going to be talking about ancient Egyptian manuscripts. Therefore, of course, we're talking about hieroglyphics. Now my guest on set looks after the antique Egyptian manuscripts at France's Bibliothèque Nationale, the National Library here in Paris. She's been deeply involved in a special project at the library this year on Jean-François Champollion, formerly uh, known as the decipher of Egyptian hieroglyphs and a founding figure in the field of Egyptology. Thanks very much for coming and talking to us on the programme. Um, let's talk first of all about Egyptology and hieroglyphics as well. Why do you think people are so fascinated by it? Oh, it's more than a thousand of years that people are fascinated with hieroglyphic. I think the images, the striking uh, strength of uh, these scripts uh, does fascinate. And uh, when you are going to Egypt, uh, you are moving all around these uh, walls and old temples, and you can just uh, walk like an Egyptian in their ruins. It's a very fascinating civilization. Yeah. I mean, just watching the images behind it does make you sort of go, wow, that's, uh, it's just something so different, isn't it, I suppose? Yes, uh, people find them uh, exotic, and it was uh, uh, like this since the beginning. And uh, Champ François Champollion uh, just uh, tried to manage uh, to understand that and uh, to say, okay, it seems different, but uh, they are speaking like us about uh, uh, everyday life, uh, they are dying, they are believing in gods, and uh, that's why it's also fascinating. It seems exotic, but it still uh, talks to us. And obviously you're, in a way, kind of carrying on the work that he did all that time ago. How do you, or what do you do, to try and ensure that these things that are not lost, to try and preserve them? Yeah, we are still in Egyptology uh, uh, teaching, and uh, uh, currently I'm uh, teaching hieroglyph in the university. And uh, we are trying also to show his, uh, the manuscripts of Champollion. Uh, we did a huge exhibition in the National Library, but uh, we do lend some uh, manuscripts to other exhibitions now in the British or in louvre lens if you want to see them. And uh, we are sharing this quest and this passion uh, from the decipher and founder of Egyptology. And uh, it's very uh, fascinating how uh, works he have managed to uh, achieve in a, so few uh, years because he died at a very young age, uh, about 41 years old. And uh, the paperwork side of some of the images we're seeing, how do you actually go about preserving that? I mean, it's not just a case, presumably, of put, sticking them away in a drawer somewhere and hoping they'll, they'll survive many, many more years. Yeah, for sure, because, uh, you know, there are some uh, uh, special ink uh, used in the 19th century, which is very fragile now. So we are uh, of, uh, very careful of the condition uh, about humidity and uh, uh, climate and conditioning. And uh, of course, we are doing some uh, restoration about uh, this work. And uh, we try to preserve it and to share it also by digitization. And we have this. Uh, a library online freely available, Gallica, uh, and we have a lot more of manuscript of uh, Champollion since this year, thanks to the commemoration. That's interesting what you say about digital, so presumably even if the originals were damaged or were lost in some way, there's always some, some way of preserving them using modern technology as well. Yes, we try to do so, and we have a special uh, archiving system uh, like uh, over National Library in order to preserve uh, this data. So how did um, Jean-Francois Ch Champollion, how did he go about doing what he did? Because presumably when he started, it was almost impossible for him to decipher what the Egyptians were trying to say. Yes, uh, for sure the discovery of uh, Rosetta Stone was a key, but also his uh, huge knowledge of Coptic language. Both have uh, two keys for deciphering the hieroglyph. And uh, Jean-François Champollion went through all the cartouches of the Greek and Roman uh, pharaohs, and he understood that to write this name of the uh, foreign rulers for Egypt, you have to use special signs in order to pronounce the name. So here you have phonetic sound signs. And uh, his huge discovery also uh, is to understand that uh, hieroglyphic script is not only about ideas seen, but also with sound signs, and uh, it's a combination of both signs. And this was the huge discovery because before Champollion, uh, every linguist uh, just thought that uh, 
a script should be either with sound sign or either with uh, idea sign, but not a mixture of uh, both of them. So presumably for somebody like you, it was very important to you know, pay tribute, I suppose, in, in the, uh, the, the uh, exhibition that you've had to him and the work that he did. Yes, since I'm an Egyptologist, uh, it's very important. And as a curator for manuscripts, he's a kind of a model and a patron for all uh, research through uh, ancient script in order to decipher them. And uh, he's a, yes, a very uh, founder for all this kind of discipline. And what about you? How on earth did you get involved in this and, and finish up doing the job that you do? Um, yes, I just started at the Ecole du Louvre uh, as uh, studying Egyptology and I went through a uh, university in Lyon <laughs> and uh, I was in Egypt. I lived there six years and uh, uh, I've been on excavation field. I'm, uh, I'm still uh, going through uh, digs and uh, yes, I had a training as a librarian ship. So and uh, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to come in the National Library in France. So has Egypt always been something that you've been, you know, felt that was a, a passion within you? Uh, it was not Egypt, but hieroglyph. Oh, OK. So it was so, the hieroglyph. Yes, yeah. the hieroglyph and the, all the kind of languages was uh, fascinating for me. And uh, so one step after another, I came uh, to Egyptology. Okay, and what, uh, what next then? What do you think um, needs to be done now to ensure that these works are, are kept for, for, the, you know, for as long as possible and, the, and also that the work that's been done by, by him and by you and your colleagues as well is, is preserved for future generations? Um, you, we have to teach a lot and we have to share this to uh, everyone uh, for sure, uh, but we have also to... Uh, Yes, digitize and uh, to uh, ensure that the collection uh, through the museum is uh, uh, well documented and uh, that we can share it with, with uh, all kind of public. Because it's not only of making new Egyptologists, but uh, that uh, everyone uh, is involved in this uh, sharing and caring for ancient uh, heritage. Good to have you with us on the programme today. Thanks very much for Thank coming you. in and, and sharing the passion. It's good to see those images as well, which uh, really kind of sum up why uh, Vanessa and your colleagues as well, I'm sure, are so passioned by it. Thanks very much, Vanessa Desco there from uh, uh, France's Bibliothèque Nationale, the National Library.